guys and girls. Thank you for tuning in. For our first episode, we had Kevin Tashira, the co-founder and general manager of the Warehouse Gym. He's also a strength athlete and a strength coach. Now, I picked Kevin um, because of several reasons. Well, one, because he's been there, done that, from bodybuilding to personal training to starting his own gym. He's probably one of the nicest people and one of the most knowledgeable people I know. We talk about everything from prospecting to Terminator. We talk about how he caught the bug, which is a really interesting story. You guys should listen to that. Uh, we talk about the highs and lows of the personal training business. We talk about being relentless and seizing an opportunity when you see one. Hiring personal trainers, professionalism, expanding from one gym to five. Um, I expected a lot from this interview and Kevin just did not disappoint. Um, we catch up with Kevin in his natural habitat with music blaring in the background. We got weights banging um, and, and it, I thoroughly enjoyed this, this, this interview. So without further ado, here's Kevin Tashira on the Project Generation Strong podcast. Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Alrighty. Um, welcome guys and girls to episode one of the Project Generation podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, to kick off this project, we are here with a phenomenal human being and one of the nicest people I have ever known. He's an entrepreneur, he's the co-founder of the Warehouse Gym, he's also the general manager of the Warehouse Gym. He's a strength athlete, he's a trainer, and a really good friend. Kevin, welcome on the show. Uh, hi, Ray. How are you doing today? Uh, good, good, yeah. Do you, do, you, do, you like your, do you like your desolation of small mug? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, it, it goes really well with his forums. All right, okay. um, guys, we'll, we'll dig in and we'll get some really good value today and uh, we'll, we'll try to pick Kevin's brain on uh, okay. stuff that he's really, really good at. Uh, we'll start with the Wonder Years. We call this segment the Wonder Years. Okay. Um, growing up, how was growing up? Was Were you always into fitness? Was your family like very... Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, look, um, Back at home, back in the UK, you know, as you go through school, you know, you, you play a lot of sports and activities. So yes, I was. Um, you know, as a kid, I was uh, overweight. So you know, that also had its difficulties at times. Um, oh, you were overweight. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I think like most kids, but I was. And uh, you know, even though you know, difficulties is in sometimes your, you know, your your ability. You know, I was always still played sport and got got involved. Nice. So, what was your favorite sport? It, it, back it, back in when I was back home and I was at school and high school, it would have been football. Nice. It would have been the usual stuff, you know, football, like football and soccer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, yeah, we call it football. Yeah, football. Nice. Yeah, nice. Um, was there was there like a turning point in your life where you're like, I am done with this weight, and you built this great, beautiful? Yeah, there built. was actually, and I, I remember, I remember, as you know, as you start. As you start getting older, right, or you start, you know, going through the teenage years, and you start thinking about girls and the way you look, um, I just there was always there was a point. Um, we were, you know, we were always trying to sneak into clubs. Okay, so like when you're like 15, you know, you're trying to sneak into nightclubs, and in the UK you have to be 18 years, correct, you know, to to go. So um, one time, the first time we got in. So there's a group of friends and we all got into this nightclub. We're all underage, obviously, so. And then we see a, a friend of mine, uh, he was from a different school, and he was looking in great shape. And again, you know, he was there in the club, on the dance floor, with like all the girls. Nice. And that's what like hit it home, I thought, you know what, a guy's looking in great shape. And I was like, you know what, I wanna, do, I, yeah, I wanna yeah, be where yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah. So that made me really kick my butt to get into the gym. Nice. So straight away after seeing that, um, yeah, I joined up the local YMCA. Amazing. And, and joined up and thought, you know what? I want to get in shape. I want, you know, I want to, you know, I've been what we call chubby overweight yeah. for most of my teenage or teenage years. Okay. You know, I want to get in shape. And after seeing that guy, you know, picking up all the girls, it was like, all right, if, 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 if that's what I've got to do, it's what I've got to do. <laughs> okay, cool. So it wasn't really a probably a um, you know genuine reason for getting into it, health, and you know all the yeah, blah yeah, blah yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was more of a uh, very superficial reason. Awesome. But what was funny was I really caught, caught the bug. Yeah. 
and uh, it was a summer, it was a summer vacation. Nice. So when we were off um, the school, what we call the school holidays, so it's around six to eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So every day I went to YMCA, every day, and I was in there like doing everything wrong. You know, I was in there three hours a day training, and uh, I remember just training the same body parts. <laughs> yeah. And I remember going in and, um, you know, you, you have your induction with your gym instructor, and he was an older, he was an older gentleman at the time, and he, used to get, he gave me a basic gym program. And had everything covered, the legs, you know, the back, you know, all the, all the kind of stuff. Yeah. But again, as being young and naive and it was just about the show and the look, I just, you know, I just wanted to work my biceps, I just wanted <laughs> to work my chest. And pretty much every day, so the exercises he gave me for the legs, I like quickly, quickly did. <laughs> Triceps I didn't do, shoulders I didn't do, and it was just chest and biceps, chest and biceps. and. Uh, and even like the day, you know, the day after, you got doms. So I, I really didn't know what I was doing. So I'd go in like on a Monday, chest, Tuesday chest, Wednesday chest, Thursday, same, just the same. <laughs> Cross for the girls, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they were the parts that, you know, yeah. you see in your head that yeah. are like the kind of masculine parts, the chest, the biceps, that, that kind of stuff. The girls and pubs, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but I got the bug. And uh, and from that, I started picking up the magazines. You know, started um, you know being associated. You know, being around different people, seeing different people, and seeing how they train. And nice. uh, got to meet a few guys. They went to a different gym. I went to a gy different gym, but then it was more bodybuilding yeah. orientated. Nice. You know. So you you grew up in Liverpool, like near Liverpool. No, a small town. It's called Southport, but it's near Liverpool. Okay, it's not yeah, far. Yeah. Are you a fan of uh, the team? I was again when I was younger and I was playing football and yeah, all this. Yeah. It was Liverpool, uh, you know, a Liverpool supporter. You know, we come from a small town, but it's a small town where a lot of the footballers, yeah. you know, live. Yeah. Especially the old older guys that yeah. are retired. Yeah. So you see them quite often. Nice. Um, so it's a heavily, you know, football influenced. Town, but yeah, yeah, Liverpool, yeah, yeah, Liverpool supporter. Yeah. So my a funny story. So my, my brother is a diehard Liverpool fan, and he was just there for the derby game with Everton yeah. uh, on the ninth for his birthday. And uh, my 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 sister in law organized this whole thing where Phil Neal came up to him and you know wished him happy birthday and took mm -hmm. a picture with him. He didn't know who Phil Neal was. I mean, he comes from the era of like Steven Gerrard and yeah. Morrow uh, yeah. and 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 and. and and the head, but he didn't. He really didn't know. And he's like, "You don't know who I am." I'm like, "I'm the most decorated player in Liverpool." <laughs> My poor kid brother was so embarrassed. Anyways, um, long story short. Okay, uh, any role models growing up? Uh, not really. Not really. But you know, I think uh, you know, I was born in the '80s, so I think when you have that '80s and '90s era, I mean, you it was heavily in influenced by action films, movies. That was like. Yeah. The time of yeah. Stallone. That was the time. Schwarzenegger, you know, Van Damme. Even the toys that you played with as a kid were yeah. all hyper, you know, like overly muscular. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that's what really got me sort of nice. being aware of it. Yeah. And uh, and I always remember thinking, you know, I want to look like that one day. I want to look like that. But nice. never did read yeah. anything about it until I seen it actually happen on a dance floor in a club when I was <laughs> yeah. like 15 like, years old. I was thinking, you know, like, you know right, I've got to really do something now. Awesome, man. Now those were, those. I, I, I don't think they make them that way anymore, like the van, the blood sports and the, and the Terminator, the Predators yeah. and the, yeah. the Rambo yeah. and Rockies. Definitely, and, I think for like guys that are like 30 plus, I think that's what really got a lot of people in yeah. the gym yeah. and doing martial arts as well or doing some sort of, yeah. you know, boxing, yeah. some a, a, a discipline into the gym. It was every film, you had to be like an <laughs> overly masculine superhero. That's true, that's true, yeah. And like now it's different, you know, it's, it's us, you know, you know, it's again a different look and I think it, it ties in with the business, yeah. you know. Right. Um, you know, when I was, you know, growing up, these kind of films and these action heroes and stars were around. It influenced people day to day, so, you see that time really in the gyms, everyone was bodybuilding. Yeah. And I think that's what got me into it. You know, the gym I went into was yeah. a very bodybuilding type gym. And the town that I come from is also a very bodybuilding type yeah. town. 
Um, you know, in the northwest of England, you have uh, not just football, but you have rugby. Yeah. So a lot of the guys play rugby, right. the same as American yeah. football yeah. in the yeah. States. Yeah. You know, you need to be jacked up, you need to be strong, you need to have some weight. So if you're following them sports, you're yeah. bodybuilding, you're doing a bodybuilding type program. Correct. Um, and also the town that I come from, they have the Mr. Universe there. So the Nabi Universe is there, that's where, you know, obviously um, Schwarzenegger in back yeah. in the day uh, won that competition. So that town and that area is heavily influenced by bodybuilding. bodybuilding. And I think that with the era of that kind of 80s and 90s, yeah. really got this kind of uh, bodybuilding scene and, and how most people people till really recently have, have trained yeah. you know more kind of uh, bodybuilding correct uh, focus yeah. program you know? I think yeah and, and I think uh, there's a we owe a lot to that 80s 90s eras yeah. of the Slys and the the Arnolds and the, uh, for what the fitness industry is today I think and uh, really like Arnold himself like just pushed that industry yeah. so far forward when with his movies and his um, that, was, that was pretty cool. Was that was there a particular gym you went to? I think you mentioned like the hardcore like gym after YMCA. Yeah, so I started at the YMCA, and then you know I got to meet some friends. Uh, they went to a different gym. It was a very hardcore kind of bodybuilding gym. It was kind of nervous going there. You know, when you're 16 years old and everyone's like uh, 20 and 30 oh, years like old, massive, yeah. and they look massive. Yeah. It's like so you felt really intimidated. <laughs> what was it called? It was called The Phoenix. The Phoenix. The Phoenix, and that had a story as well. I mean, it's a funny story. Very um, hardcore, very dingy bodybuilding gym, but uh, they had a gym before that uh, many years ago, but it burned down. Ooh. So it burned down, it was in a fire, burned down, and they opened the second gym and they called it The Phoenix. The Phoenix, oh Phoenix. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know, rises, uh, rises from the, from the yeah. ashes. Yeah. yeah, nice. So guys, uh, legends are born in The Phoenix gym. So yeah, that's where it started actually, yeah, that's where the bodybuilding started, yeah, yeah, very much. Amazing. Um, let's talk about the bodybuilding day. So I know that you did competitions as yeah. well, so going from like that chubby uh, early teenage to like actually doing yeah. uh, competitions and I met one of your buddies out there, Mark, and he yeah. was telling me this guy was pretty good at what he did. Yeah. Um, can, you, can you touch on that a bit? Yeah, I mean, it How did that wasn't... Get going? Something that I was, you know, that I aimed, you know, that I planned to do, uh, it was just, I was in the gym, you know, I really started making some good gains, nice. and a lot of people in the gym, you know, used to say, you know, oh, you should maybe do a show, you know, because yeah. yeah. again, the town we come from and, and the region is very kind of heavily influenced on bodybuilding. So, yeah, it was just like, you know, it, it's not like, a, it, it, it wasn't the show, that and I think probably maybe people who do but who bodybuild the show's kind of cringy and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it, it's not about that. It's, it's the process leading to it. Yeah. So you know, I thought you know what, why not put myself out there? You know, twelve weeks to get in shape and um, let's do it. And it's, it's the process. Yeah. It's that. It's, it's you know, whereas probably a lot of other sports, hobbies, activities, recreation. Yeah. It's all about maybe the show day, you know. It's the same in bodybuilding, it is about that day. But what's really about it, it's more of a, a lifestyle choice, 24-7. Um, it's, and it's that process, yeah. saying that you're going to do that and you need to be in this shape, yeah. you know, in 12 weeks' time. Yeah, amazing. And yeah, that's, that's totally... Um, so I wanted to touch on this a bit because I know that there's a lot of youngsters out there who are trying to get into the bodybuilding and the fitness modeling and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of hard work. Um, how did you support yourself during that time? I know that you were growing up. Was it the family or were you working? No, I was, um, yeah, I mean, I was, um, you know, lived at home. Um, you know, when I went to college, university, the university I picked was close to home. Um, so yeah, stayed at home, had a job, um, you know, as you do, as you're growing up, you have, you know, you, you work, you know, plus your college, and, you know, so yeah, I mean, looking back then, it was, you know, as long as I get my creatine, as long as I get my protein, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's all it is, but you know, it's, it, it is expensive, Yeah, it you is. know, when you're like 15, 16 yeah. and you just got a, a small part-time job, a, a tub of protein, yeah. especially in the UK, it's expensive, yeah. it really is, so um, you have your gym membership, you know, but 
yeah, um, you know, food, again, um, sometimes a bit difficult, yeah. you know, when you're at home and, you know, you know, I, my mum, I just live with my mum, you know, so it's a very small family, no brothers or sisters. Um, so, yeah, you know, your mum cooks food and I think she got frustrated a lot because I was very selective in what I could yeah. eat and what I couldn't. Um, but yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it, it's it's not too difficult. Amazing. You know, is that is that be uh, expensive? That's what I is that is that where you like uh, when you started working behind the chicken counter at Tesco, where you're like, you know, what, from, like yeah. sell one, eat one, sell yeah, one, eat one. Yeah, I mean, that to, was to that that, that, that was helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we have a, a little supermarket chain, a bit like you know, like you have you know, Waitrose, Waitrose or whatever, yeah. you know. Big super, you know, market chain. As a kid growing up, that's you, yeah, you, nice. you know the job you have to work at weekends and sometimes after school. But you know, I was lucky to work on a, a chicken counter. <laughs> yeah. and the chicken counter was like we were just sneaking the back and just <laughs> <That's> unlimited, <laughs> unlimited chicken. That's the same thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, we had some good stuff, good times yeah, then. Yeah. You know, a friend of mine, he was also into bodybuilding. He worked on the um, the butcher. So he would bring down Amazing. steak, fill All it, the best cuts, we'd yeah. pull it in the oven, we'd roast it. Amazing. So yeah, perfect chicken, steak, Amazing. you know, every day. So it was good. Like, that's yeah. cool, that's so cool. Um, do you have any message for young bodybuilders out there, aspiring bodybuilders, like anything that you've learned in the past and, and you would like to give them a message? Um, what's important is, um, it's sort of, you know, not taking it probably too serious. Uh, I think when, it, you know, when you, you mentioned about the physique thing, it, it's, it's changed, right? Um, you know, when I grew up, it was very bodybuilding and, and training. You know, it, you look at the gym floor here, people, it's very diverse. It's not chest day, back day, leg day. I mean, people still, people do that uh, and there's a purpose, but, you know, it's a lot more diverse how people exercise now. And um, what I would say is, you know, D don't, don't, um, don't stress. Be consistent. Um, keep an open mind. You know, don't think it's got to be them rigid uh, routines. Um, don't rush it because I think for you to develop muscle, if it's from a bodybuilding or physique type, it takes time. Yeah. And you know, bodybuilding has a bad rap, um, and uh, there's very good reasons for it. You know. Um, and just just be aware, and you know, just make sure you uh, uh, look at all different outcomes. Because yeah. you know, the whole bodybuilding is the issue of uh, drugs yeah. associated with it. And um, you know, a lot of people. What I've seen is a lot of people want to get into it, want to get you know, do a competition, or well, maybe not, and just get try and get jacked up as quick as possible Correct. and doing that is shortcuts you know yeah. and yeah. yeah so don't you know there's always a payback Correct. there always, there always yeah. is uh, you might not think it today yeah. I remember when I was young you don't think what life's going to be like when you're 30 you don't even think what life's going to be like mid 20s you just think about the moment and sometimes you do stuff uh, that you might not see a kind of short term a side effect yeah, or side effect, issue yeah. today but you might see it later down the road yeah so just you know yeah. be consistent take yeah. your time and do it right perfect you know and don't be a douche yeah I mean sometimes <laughs> with the whole bodybuilding there is the attitude that comes yeah. with it as well yeah. and it's a shame really because bodybuilding's great you know um, it can benefit strength metabolic health you know all the all the pro sides of it, but there is that element on the dark side. Yeah. You know, and also people's characters and kind Beautiful. of personalities. Yeah. You know? True. I I hundred percent agree with that. It's I'm so into powerlifting, and it's so like one movement, one movement, one movement, and you hammer away on that same movement. With bodybuilding, there's so many different varieties. You're trying to target so many different muscle fibers and you're working with angles and, and exercises and just playing with like you know little things in your program in your blocks it it just builds such a diverse you and it builds such a such a strong you and I think Stan Stan Efforting is like a very big he, he would like power lift I think for like 30 40 percent of the year and then 60 percent of the year would a lot of bodybuilding yeah. focus um, because it does build a lot of like good muscle mass range of motion it that, that wear and tear on joints of like 
just continuously hammering it away. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. And I think uh, you know, balance. Yeah, and the, with the you know with bodybuilding, I think just be careful. You know, like, you know, one mistake I look, you know, one mistake when I was younger, you know, was reading and looking at the routines in the flex magazines and yeah. the muscle and health and stuff like those. that. The very kind of they're probably they're, they're not suited for the average person yes. who's on the gym yes. floor. Yes. Um, and you look at the programs have changed now a lot, but yeah. back in my day it was like chest day, day one, back, legs, shoulders, arms. And I don't quite agree with that programming. And so yeah, I think bodybuilding done correctly, and yeah. um, hypertrophy training, also with heavy strength element. Yeah. You know, you look at the, you know, bodybuilding really had its heyday, like when you look back in the past. Yeah, you know, you, I agree. You, you look at the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, yeah. where it was. It, it was all kind of merged. Yeah. You know, you look at the bodybuilders then; they were strength athletes. Yeah. They lifted. Yeah. They did a lot of body weight movements. Yeah. It was pull ups. It was dips. It was basics. It was heavy lifting. Um, where. Then the 80s and 90s and up to today now really did change. Too much machines, too much isolation. Um, too much GH. Yeah, it's different supplementation, yeah. en enhancements, um, and it, it lost that basics. Yeah. You know, the yeah. basics that no, you, ha you have to lift. You know, you have to be functional. Um, so yeah, I, I would try and yeah, I'd say just be. Um, wider in your uh, thought yeah. process when it comes to uh, doing a bodybuilding. Awesome. Who was your favorite bodybuilder growing up? Uh, I think, look, I think, again, as a kid growing up and, and seeing films like Terminator and stuff, it, was, it would have <laughs> yeah. been Schwarzenegger, of course, yeah, you cool. know? Yeah. definitely, I think, you know. Not, not I think a everybody, thing. Yeah. I mean, look, when, you, when you're when younger, yeah. you know, he, he was again, like, being honest, you want to see who, which <laughs> guy's the most jacked. Yeah. And uh, at the time, seen in the films and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. and then you look at the pick up the flax magazines, and you're seeing Dorian Yates, yeah, Ronnie yeah, yeah, Coleman, yeah, yeah, yeah. all these guys. It was like bigger is better, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but not necessarily. True. And then when you look back in the day, and you start looking back at some of the old kind of, you know, strength athletes, the guys that were down at Venice, yeah. the history behind that, you know, all them guys that were training, yeah, some great physique, amazing, great, yeah, yeah. 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 amazing. All right, uh, let's move on to our next segment, which is called entrepreneurship, the, the word of the century, I, I, I think that is. Um, what was your first business venture? Um, probably really starting PT, yeah. you know, when I was back in the UK. So, you know, after I finished university, I was um, working in the gym nice. as a gym instructor. And that's where it really, you know, started my career as in, in the gym in, in the industry. Yeah. Um, but the, the company I worked for, for whatever reasons, decided not, they didn't have personal training. Hmm. Okay. So they didn't have it. It was meant gyms did, but yeah. they yeah. didn't have it. And, you know, I didn't really think of PT as an avenue. This was a bit of a stock gap after university. I w did a sports science degree. I was looking into more SNC, strength and conditioning. Yeah. Um, so, once I finished that, I did some other additional postgrad uh, nice. work. Oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, get into maybe, um, that was, that was going to university, that's what I wanted to be, right? It was doing strength and conditioning. I mean, real strength and conditioning. <laughs> um, working for a team, you know, um, club, etc. And um, I was in the gym, just doing my day-to-day, -day, you know, gym instructor, uh, you know, Role. Nice. And one of the guys in there just approached me and said, "Look, I've been watching you. I've been seeing how you, you know, train or in, you know, induct. Because I want you to be my trainer." Ooh. I was like, okay. Nice. So I was like, I didn't really think of it. So I said, "Okay," and that's really how it started. Amazing. And because it wasn't working for the company, yeah. it was something that I had to do on the side. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I had to just start thinking of myself. Um, as someone that was sort of self-employed in a sense, Correct. on that on yes. that sense, yes. um, and then that started picking up clientele from that. Amazing. Again, it wasn't an industry that, I, or it wasn't a position that I was aspiring to go into. Personal training. Beautiful. Got approached, 
said yeah and then other people approached me and then I produced my uh, work I went part-time and uh, started to increase my personal training yeah. I, I think a lot of uh, the youngsters today don't realize that uh, PT is you are pretty much self-employed you're scheduling yourself you're advertising you're marketing you're training you're you're following up, you're, you're assessing, you're doing so many, there's so many different variables to it. Um, it, it is pretty much your own business and yeah. you know, like kudos to you to actually get that in at, at such a young age, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, no, it's important, you, you gotta operate as a business, you know, and yep. um, structure yourself and Correct. you know, it's kind of very easy job because, you know, when you work in, in a company, you have structure, right? Yes. Personal training yes. doesn't and that can also, it's great for some, but it can also be um, difficult as well. Amazing. If you don't yeah. implement some sort of uh, yeah. kind of rules. Beautiful. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Um, Dubai move. How did that happen? And uh, how did the, the warehouse gym happen? Do you know what, right? I mean, I think everything in my life has always been by, I don't, I don't know what, maybe fate uh, and timing. Um, you know, nothing was necessarily planned. Yes. So really, you know, from that day of going into a nightclub and seeing a friend, that really inspired me to get into the gym. Um, you know, being uh, working for a in in the gym and someone asking me to personal train them. Yeah. It wasn't something that I thought about. So uh, with that same company, um, you know, I was. Uh, I worked, I was, I was obviously quite popular. Um, there was a new role position coming up. Nice. And the guy, again, it was like early 20s, you know, the, like the area manager, one of the high management in the company said, look, Kev, go for it, I think you'd be really good. Again, didn't think about doing it, you know, or going for that position. Went for the interview, the day, got the job. So I was at this, I had this fitness manager role first. Nice. Again, not what I was planning to do, but you know, step by step. And um, again, I had me, me, me move into another club, moved to another club. And um, I was uh, working there, and then one of the PTs, that, you know, obviously I had to supervise, came to me and said, uh, oh yeah, we were just chatting. He goes, oh, I've just had an email um, from Fitness First saying <laughs> that they're looking for trainers. Nice. And you know what? I just, on that moment, said, pass me uh, the contact details. So, got home, emailed the guy, email came back, it was rejected, it wasn't the right email, whatever. Okay. So the guy's name, I searched for him on Facebook, and he was on Facebook, so I dropped him a, a DM, and um, he got back to me. So there was an interview down in London, went down a week later, and got the job. And then within a couple of weeks, I was in Dubai. So, you know, from just working day to day, no plan of coming here, in a sense, to um, just someone mentioning about this job, opening up, and I was here. Um, so it was, again, very kind of just spontaneous. Yeah. Um, there wasn't much, okay, I wanna come out to Dubai. I mean, there was, there was a bit of a connection, is in a sense that I remember years before, um, back at home, watching documentary and it was back in early in the day in Dubai and if you spoke 80s 90s no it was like end of the 90s and it, they were talking about the um, the Burj Al Arab yeah, yeah. they were just finished that yeah. and there was this they were building this palm yeah. this island and I was like, watching this documentary I was like wow that looks an amazing yeah. place yeah. never heard of it I think you would speak to 99% uh, of the population have you heard of Dubai no uh, seen this documentary and then fast forward maybe eight, ten years, it was like, okay, there's some jobs going there. And uh, again, it was all very kind of spontaneous and not planned really. Nice, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways from this and the, the value that we get is that if you don't work, the world's not gonna, the universe is not gonna work for you. I mean, so easily um, we get email addresses of references here and there and they bounce. And I mean, you took that extra step to find the person on Facebook to actually DM him. I, I, I would say 80% of the population would just stop there when they got their email rejected. Um, and you actually took that step and look where you are today. I mean, that's, that's huge. Yeah, I and mean, that's I something that you can't miss, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, when you look back at some of the, when I look back, how I came here and, yeah. you know, today, uh, things sometimes, I don't know if you want to say fate, if we all have this natural destiny where we sort of a path we follow, um, because I could have easily, like you said, thought, you know what, not uh, look for the guy on Facebook. You know, I might have not been, you, that, that I remember that moment speaking to the personal trainer. If I was five minutes late, a couple minutes early, yeah. we wouldn't have had that conversation. Yeah. Um, that moment where we cross paths. Yeah. Um, again, you know, it's all about working hard and creating, you, you know, and looking out for opportunities. Beautiful. And I think, um, you know, you're right saying about that, you've got to work hard. Yeah. Because everything I've done, I've always tried to work hard. Yes. And even though there might not always be an end goal, people see that. Beautiful. I used to, you know, working from in the, in the gym to someone saying, I want you to be my trainer. I wasn't planning to be a personal trainer or I would train anyone but you know by working hard someone's watching you so you don't know who's watching you don't know who's out there you know it's important very very true um, let's talk about uh, the warehouse gym how did that happen um, again it's all about um, it's all about really moments right and timing same as you know some of the other examples I was, we went over to Fitness First, and I was like, man, this is not, we got sold a pipe, a pipe dream, and uh, <laughs> it was really bad. Um, it was, you know, we got told we we're gonna be making this, we're gonna do that, and really got into, landed there in Fitness First, it was, it was bad. And, um, you know, I mean, I think sometimes, you, you, you've really got to experience the bad, you know, and see, and because if you don't experience the, the, the you know, the, the lows, the bad points, you don't appreciate, you the, appreciate the, the, highs. The, the, the good times, yeah. and you know, um, you know when when something is going well, and yeah, fitness first, you know, there was a, a promise. It was really undelivered. Uh, we were in these like uh, out in an international city. We were putting like these tiny apartments group of guys oh my goodness. Um, you know so the personal training commission was like really 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 low you know so it was it was it felt like really coming from back in the UK yeah. where I was working I was doing my PT you know I had a good client base I had you know I was working for a company that I liked working for you know being around my friends and all that so like I felt like I was in prison. I felt like it was <laughs> it can, was like you I got picked up, it. you got dropped off. You, had, you know they wanted to take your passport from you. Um, you were working all these like crazy hours for very little money. I felt like man, this is uh, not work. This is not what I want to do. <laughs> so I was yeah. very very close to again uh, walking out. There was reasons again, uh, some pers personal reasons. Uh, which is probably for a, a, another, <laughs> another time yeah. that I stayed. Yeah. You know, um, there was nothing bad. It was it was all good. But you know, I thought you know what it wasn't just me. Um, I was in a relationship at the time, and that partner was going to come out. So to be honest, if it wasn't for that person, I would have gone home. Oh. So I was like, you know what, I don't need this. I'm going to go back home. I've got my clients. I've got my life. I've got everything. I've got a good quality of life. It wasn't like okay. I'm trying to better myself here. Yeah, I just, you know, spontaneously decided to come out. Yeah. Um, so, but she wanted to move out here, and so I, I stayed on. And uh, I was working again. Had a female client at the time, an older lady, and she told me about this opportunity at this club. It's a it's a private club, DIFC, um, and they're looking for trainers, and very exclusive. So I was like, okay, all right, I can't carry on doing this. Went there for the interview, got the job, had a look in the gym, the gym was completely empty. And I was like, wow, there's no one here. Yeah. So even though things are bad where I am now, I've got clients. Yeah. And, you know, I have someone who's sort of relying on me to get things happening yeah. here and, you know, start this new life. So I was like, I can't risk it. Yeah. So I ended up staying at Fitness First. And a friend of mine, again, who came over, we became friends, a guy from the UK was like, you know what, I've had enough Fitness First, I'm going. So he left, and he was in Dubai still for like a, you know, just you know, hanging, hanging out around, for maybe yeah. a, hanging around before he got on the plane. Um, 
And I said, look, I just got this job, but I'm not going to take it. You've got nothing to lose. Yeah. You've walked, you, you're going to go home. Just yeah. give it an extra month. So I called them up, said, look, sorry, I'm not going to take the job. However, I've got a friend, good trainer, see him. So they gave him the job. And uh, yeah, he's there, you know, didn't hear from him for a few weeks, month. I said, Kev, it's great. Goes, got great clientele. It's the kind of clientele you want as a personal trainer. <clears throat> and he said, it's great. Loads of people getting loads of leads. Everyone's coming in now. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so uh, I moved over. And, but he still wasn't happy. At the time, Dubai okay. wasn't for him. So he was like, look, I'm gonna go home for a holiday, train my clients, and um, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna come back, but don't say anything to my clients, which we didn't. Yeah. Um, he was home for two weeks. He said, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna stay back in the UK. Okay. Um, so I had just from got an influx of clientele, some good clientele, Amazing. some yeah. some guys that I, that I've, tra and obviously I met new people yeah. and new clients and people that, some clients that I still train today. And again, I um, was in there just doing my thing and there was one guy in there and I remember he was, uh, he's, he was doing an exercise and doing a lap pull down but wasn't doing it right. Yeah. And I just said, look, this is how you do it. Yeah. And uh, good guy. And after he said, thanks for that, I want you to do personal training. He said, yeah. So again, client and end up over the years building a relationship with him and it was him that started the gym with you know um, so yeah and that's it you know or not just him his uh, relative is his as well that I got to know through him and um, yeah it was uh, again timing and, and working hard and being genuine you know going up to someone and saying look your form's not right yes this is how you do it I mean, this, then, is, this is how far that can go. Like, I taught prospecting for the longest time in, in Toronto, and I, the amount of people that were scared of going to people on the lat pull down machine, guys, this is evidence that, you know, just do the hard work and help people. And, I mean, you know, and if you're true to yourself and you're hardworking, like, you can reach the top. And, I mean, obviously, Kevin is a cut above. But uh, you know, just uh, you know, he's he's probably one of the most hardworking people I've ever I've ever met. It's like six a.m., seven a.m. to like freaking nine nine p.m. The guy's like just hustling all day long. Um, but yeah, just yeah. I don't think, ever underestimate the lad pull down. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think it is. It's it. Yeah, things about being in the right place at the right time. So you can say that's fate. But it's also you putting in the work yeah. and, and being genuine as well. 100%. Beautiful. You know, I see so many trainers, and it, look, it is hard, right? Yeah. I mean, it was different, a bit easier for me then because it was a small environment. But we do see people doing yeah. stuff wrong in the gym, and we don't always approach them, but we should. But it, I know it's hard because some people do take offense. Yeah. So it's one of them, do you want to upset nice. someone and yeah. be in a situation? But if you're, if you're genuine about it and you're nice, you're not trying to sell something. You're not trying to put someone down. No one's going to be hundred yeah. um, percent. Just don't be angry. Yeah. No. Like, I don't, don't laugh at people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's uh, switch gears and go to Venice Beach. Uh, let's go to your beach gym. Um, yeah. How did that come about? So that was your uh, so this location, the El Cruz one, uh, is the is the the flagship. Yeah, no, there was an opportunity um, to open a spot on the beach, and yeah, why not? It's uh, one of the it's one of a kind, right? Like you don't have yeah anything like that in Dubai now. Yeah, I mean, originally when we when we got the opportunity and we're sort of putting what we were, the plan, what we're going to do, we're going to make it a little bit like um, kind of Venice Beach in yeah. a sense with some gym equipment. Yeah, but I mean. If you've been to Venice Beach and you look at the gym, it's yeah. really run down. Yeah, very run down. Dubai here as well. You know the, the environment is harsh. Yes. You know the you know the being right on the ocean. So it was unfortunate we couldn't because when we spoke to um, the supplier of the equipment, they said, "Look, as soon as you put it outside, you warranty you avoid." Yeah. So it was like, so we just kept it a bit more minimalistic. Yes. The rig. Uh, you know, some carts, some conditioning equipment such as rowers and stuff yeah. that we can take in and out quite easily. Um, dumbbells, yeah. 
plates yeah, and bars. Yeah. Nice. And we've just had a refurb on that. So nice. new floor, new look, new fresh. You know. Nice. So if it, so, I, I think from what I can see is it's, if you're into powerlifting, if you're into, into the functional stuff, if you're into like calisthenics, then that would be and 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 you like taking pictures where you overlook the beach and the and the sea. It's, yeah. it's probably the best place to be, right? Yeah, and and that's all you need. Yeah. Bar something to do some exactly. sort of, you know, pulling your your body weight, bar plates and dumbbells. Nice. And I think it's it, it, it's great now again seeing the. The, the change in the um, in the fitness industry yep. because you know going back to the days of you know when I started out as bodybuilding it was when I mean, the gym the gym scene's coming a bit full circle right yeah. I mean I, I've said this a gym like this big um, the warehouse gym might have not existed ten years ago correct you know it would have been on a very small scale look how many people now come in here that have diverse training approaches it, it, it's not I'm, I'm on a machine sure. doing chest day and back yeah. day it I am lifting I'm using barbells I'm using dumbbells I'm, I'm using my body yeah you know that's how it was like back in the day yeah. back in you know Correct. when it really did start Correct. and then we had that gap in the 80s 90s and early 2000s where it just went very kind of commercial commercial it was just machines and it was bodybuilding now you're seeing that break away and we're going back to where it really started and you, you come in here and you see people lifting power lifting Olympic lifting even in bodybuilding are doing deadlift and squats yes. and that's how bodybuilders used to train you yeah. look at the great bodybuilders and the, and the guys that had amazing physiques yeah for their time they were the guys that lifted they were the guys that were strong um, they weren't the guys that just sat on a we got leg extensions when yeah. not yeah. against it, but it's not like my workouts are leg press and leg extension. Yeah. I squat, I deadlift, I do stiff legs, I do yeah. lunges, then I use the leg press, yeah. I use the you know, the leg extension <laughs> yeah. chain, you know. And uh, I think it's really coming full circle and going back to the beach, you know, we're seeing people just doing and training Good outside like that. Pure stuff, yeah. Again, years before you know, go back ten years. You know, people be like, oh, yeah, where is the leg extension? Where is the pet deck? You know, and, and that was like kind of a funny story, you know, when you go back to the gym, you know, when we first opened this, there wasn't as much machines. Correct. So I know you're, you're, you know, you're a newish member. Yeah. But when we first opened four years ago, we had less machines. It was a lot of open space. It was the kind of the rig and the, you know, the, the, the basics that you see here. Yes. But we didn't have the pet deck. We didn't have the car phrase. Mm. And... People were coming in when we first opened because we were different and we looked different. Yeah. So people came in out of curiosity and it was like, well, where's your pet deck? Where's it? And it was like, we've not got one. And, and there was reasons why I didn't get that yeah. equipment because unfortunately, you know, the bodybuilding crowd, bodybuilding, nothing against it and that's where I come from, but there's a, there's a bad element there. Not saying it, not everyone. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, generalize. Generalize, yeah, but you know, but there is there's a some people that there is a bad element yeah, there, yeah. and I don't think it's the right way to go. Uh, you know, it's not the direction I would want to go. Correct. So um, I think what's unique about this gym is that it's allowed people from different backgrounds, training styles, all to come and merge and train, and it keeps this very nice atmosphere. Yeah. You know, and now we have got more machines, and we brought them all okay. in, in, and we still will. We've still got some more sh machines to bring in, um, but yeah, no, it just keeps um, keeps the atmosphere, you know, yeah. balanced. Cool. You know? And for anyone who's uh, not familiar with the warehouse gym, I mean, Kevin's managed to build something that has hammer strength, that has prime, that has. Elico that has Rogue that has uh, am I missing anything else? You know we have Woodways now. Woodways with, now, yeah. You know, I think you know with again the, the gym industry is taking a, a change again, and we're seeing it very we're seeing it get polarized. Yeah. So we've got the movements and the budget gyms, um, we've got the um, movements in boutiques, yeah. studios, yeah. yeah. Um, concepts yeah. and I think that's where we fall in and uh, us as a business as a gym we've got to provide the very best Beautiful. so we tend not to 
do a typical fit out, which you do see here, right? Yeah. Yeah. You see a gym chain go, okay, all right, we're gonna do all techno, oh, sorry, yeah. we're yeah. gonna do all Life fitness, fitness. Sorry, yeah. 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 You know, at the beginning we had, we had Rogue, we had Life Fitness and Hammer Strength, which is the same company. Uh, but as we've evolved over the last four years, it's best in class. Amazing. So we don't, you know, okay, we're just getting this brand to fit us all out, to yeah. fit the gym out. Beautiful. We're looking for the best, you know, we're looking for the best conditioning Perfect. tools, we're looking for the best treadmills, we're looking for the best dumbbells, we're looking for the best machines, even if it's some from this brand, from this brand. So when you look at our gyms, we have a, a very diverse range of equipment and yeah, you know, it, it, it's best in class and, and we're at that end of the spectrum where people come here because they want, you know, there's a reason why people come Correct. here, yeah. you know, and we want to make sure we can give them the best equipment and the tools and, and the, the right atmosphere to, yeah. to do that. I mean, there's, yeah, I, I, most of my friends when I post pictures, they're like, dude, look, that is the sickest gym we've ever seen in our life. Like, we want to come and train in a discotheque. No, <laughs> but it's so cool. The vibe is yeah. good here, too. And they're all professional people. Like, everyone's from different, like, areas and genres. And it's so cool. Like, everyone's so nice and professional. And they're here to do serious stuff. Um, let's move on to some marketing and promotion. Uh, so, Kevin uh, has a product called Burr. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. Um, he came up with the idea. Talk to us a little bit more about your product what is it okay I mean it's just in concept phase at the moment so we we've, we've had it on the counter now for a, a you know a couple of months and really it's just a you know a convenient way of you know our biggest seller in, the, in on the bar is the protein shakes yeah maybe not everyone wants to queue and wait we see loads of people with shakers and stuff like that I mean that's not a first um, I, there was something very similar back at home and I thought it was a great idea and it was basically that you can, you know, the individual portion sizes, so you don't have to have your protein shaker yeah. that leaks, that smells. It's just that you, um, you know, you can buy a selection of them, keep them in the gym bag, keep them in the yeah. car, keep them in the office, and then just put, put the water in. It doesn't have to be water or whatever you want, your coconut water, your uh, almond milk, mix it up Beautiful. and drink it. So it's just, it's really for people on the go. It's saving you any sort of hassle and mess. It's more of a con convenient way. Um, I mean, there's, there's, like I said, it's, the idea is just to see if people take to it and then hopefully we'll try and do some, we've got some other stuff planned, you know, nice. some other range of supplements, hopefully try and awesome. explore. Nice. I, I, I really believe that, you know, and when you, when you're in a market and you, you, you find a gap or you see a way to make it more convenient for people or they're having trouble in certain areas and you plug that gap or you try to provide them with a solution, those products really do well. Yeah. And you know, good luck with uh, Burr and I've used it quite a few times and yeah. I know uh, quite a few of my friends have used it. Yeah. Uh, Alex used it this morning. Um, and yeah. Yeah, good anyway. good. that's good, that's what, yeah. that's what we want, yeah. you know. Um, all right, any advice to young entrepreneurs? Work hard, make sure you uh, don't underestimate the lat pull down. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't know if I'd say, you know, say I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, I don't, I don't think like that, but what I'd say is I think just in life, regardless if you're a personal trainer working for yourself, you want to start your own thing to work in for somewhere, you've got to work hard. Yeah. Be, be genuine and work hard. Cool. Awesome. Um, let's move on to our next segment, which is called Like a Boss. Da, 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 da. Um, expanding from two gyms, so you have the El Cusa, Al Barsha, right? Which yeah, it's Al Barsha. Yeah. Sorry, Al Barsha gym, and then you have the beach gym. You are moving into a third location now. Yeah, we've got you? Business Bay opening very, very soon, within the next few days. And then Springs and Design District later on in the year. Ooh, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Springs and Design District. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So again, um, two good locations. Yeah. So yeah, busy times. You know. Okay. So this is a question I wanted to ask Kevin for a long time. Uh, ever since I've been here or I've visited, um, I've noticed a lot of gyms shutting down, going out of business, downsizing, and you on the other hand are expanding. Um, what do you think sets you apart and what's your USP or what? What makes you who you are? And the warehouse. Um, 
I think there's, 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 there's been some, you know, um, very important. Um, I think what we've done is um, being careful, right? And I think, you know, um, it's not just me, there's other people behind the scenes as well. And I think what we did was obviously create something very different. You know, so I know people, or there's been other gyms that have opened that have tried to, you know, try and copy. copy. Yeah, yeah, we I see it. I see it from day one. <laughs> yeah. You know, and what we did so was modest. we did we did we did it we 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 did something that was very different at yeah. the time four years ago. You know, before it was either bodybuilding gyms yeah. and that's it, and then there, there, there was a whole movement of CrossFit boxes opening. But we were the first to bring CrossFit into. A gym, yeah. people probably, you know. Um, so you know, when we first opened, it was like people would be like, "Oh, this is the CrossFit gym." Yeah, you have a box, a box in a gym. So yeah. you know, we have always considered ourselves as a facility. You know, not pigeonhole us as a gym, as a name, or as a box. It's a facility, whatever you want to do. So we, we were very unique in the what what we what we had. You know, we weren't just one, you know, one approach. So we. We're unique in that sense, and we always treated this as a business as well. Um, I think that I don't know, but I see from the outside. So I don't know if you know. I might not be right in saying so, but you look at a lot of the um, other facilities and gyms and stuff that have come and gone. Uh, apart from being, you know, you have to be unique. You have to be different. But of these been managed and operated and and ran in a way as any other business I mean it's a learning curve for me Great. doing this you know it was you know I'm you know I you know I from personal trainer to to, to run in this and um, you know I, I'll be honest Huge learning curve. I did, yeah it was I was winging it <laughs> and, and still am you know um, <laughs> but I think with what I've seen with other gyms and stuff here I don't think they've been ran as a business, yeah. you know, and you know, done everything that should be, you know, paying yeah. the rent, paying this. I mean, I know some people. Oh, I've got a space, you know, and I, I, you have to operate it as a business yeah. and and have them fundamentals in right. place because if them fundamentals are not in place, you're not going to grow. Yeah. You can get away with opening a facility and maybe I don't know the owners. Oh, I'm not going to charge rent. I'm not going to. Um, employ staff. I'm gonna let just people, freelancers come in, um, and yeah, that's great for now. But then, as you want to grow and expand, uh, you've got no foundation, no yeah, brand. Yeah, and I think that was always the thing with the warehouse: trying to develop Good. a uh, do it right and make sure it's it's uh, it's a brand. Correct. Yes. Um, yeah, you've, you're you're pretty hands-on, and you're there, and you're, you're involved. A couple of more questions later on, but um, top three things you look for in a personal trainer, a good personal trainer. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I think now, I mean, again, I'm st I'm still learning, it's still experience, right? I've not yeah. been doing this, you know, on this side, you know, for a long lot for a long time. But I think it's it's attitude. Yeah, it's attitude. It's attitude. It's um, it's work ethic, yep. you know, um, and it's um, someone that is committed. Someone who is punctual. You know, they're going to be here. You know, at nine o'clock. They're going to be here at nine o'clock. Forget the CV with um, a million certifications. With, yeah. That, to be honest, doesn't necessarily impress yeah. me. It really doesn't. It's not rocket science what yeah. we do. You know, I'm you know a personal trainer as well. It's attitude. It's how somewhat someone's work ethic yeah. and the, the qualifications we can go and yeah. do that. Yeah. But it, 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 it's really how that person um, can fit in a team player Perfect. as well, and they can fit in. You know, it's important that that person can interact with the members, the yeah, customers, yeah. the rest of the staff, 100%. you know, 
these are the things definitely I look for. And I think a lot of uh, a lot of what Kev just mentioned like leads into retention. I don't. Uh, I'm not a big believer of how many clients you have. I believe I, I'm a big believer in how many clients you can retain and how much success can you get with them. And everything you just mentioned, being punctual, being professional, having your workouts ready, being good, being professional, being able to talk to them uh, yeah. at, at a very personal yeah. level and understanding them, listening to them, that all ties into like good results and retention. And, and I think that's, yeah. Oh, cool, uh, what are the top three things you don't like to see in a trainer? Um, uh, lack of discipline. Yeah. Um, in a sense, and that can cover lots of, you know, you know, being like cancelling, you know, on the Last clients. Minute, yeah. um, you know, I don't like to sort of see, you know, the the trainer. You know, we we build relationships, but you know, your client isn't your your friend and isn't your mum or your dad. Yeah. You know, okay, can I ask for money? Can I ask for this? I see that too much all the time. I yeah. don't. I mean, that's it's not. It's not accepted. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Definitely you know, not. Yeah. Definitely. You know. So probably lack of discipline. Cool. Um, you know, really, and that would bad attitude. Um, you know, probably, Negative, yeah. and I think that lack of discipline covers a lot of things. Correct. Okay. Cool. Um, what do you love about the fitness industry right now? Uh, what I think, what I really like about it now is that there's there's, there's so much going on. Yeah. It's diverse yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, keep going back into the day, but yeah. you know it was very uh, one style approach, wasn't it? It was like your muscle and fitness, your flex magazines. That was it. Your bodybuilding focus. People now are powerlifting, they're weightlifting, they're doing strongman, they're doing bodybuilding, they're training for physique shows. So they're, 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 there's, there's a lot going on. Uh, the group, the group exercise concept, as well. You know, everyone's getting into more classes. Classes are changing. You've seen that. Yeah. It's so there's so much going on in the fitness industry at the moment. Amazing, cool. Um, any advice for aspiring young trainers? Uh, again, it's work hard, be genuine. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, don't neglect the qualifications, of course. Keep learning, keep reading. Um, you know, keep um, growing yourself as a trainer. I think we can all get into this rut. I see that with you know, even with myself. Yeah. You get into daily, daily grind and you don't do courses, you don't read, you don't do that. So it's important, yeah. very important to keep that. Yeah. But just focus on working hard, being genuine, and willing to learn. I think it won't go wrong. Cool, nice. Awesome, man. Um, we'll move on to our next segment. I know my, uh, my Alex is like, come on, dude. Um, <laughs> we call it Eat, Sleep, Train, Repeat. Um, daily routine, what's your daily routine like? What time do you wake up? Normally wake up around 5:30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I still do some personal training as well. Nice. So get in for a client maybe 6 a.m. Yeah. Um, and then I normally work, you know, do some admin, do stuff what I've got to do. At the moment things are kind of hectic, so I'm in and out a lot now. So I don't really have a, a, a set structure at the moment. So. But uh, have you ever had? Are you? Uh, have you ever been one of those guys who's got a morning routine like meditation and? No, uh, no, no, affirmation. No, 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 nothing. <laughs> just you know, get up, have a coffee, get straight into the gym. Um, I suppose it's probably Keep it real. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna say I wake up and have you know like my green, my, you know my <laughs> my wheatgrass or my you know I'm gonna juice and yeah, you know, meditate for thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, you know, but it's just um, yeah. So that's what I tend to do. Have a coffee, get in, have a first client, and maybe have some food nice. after that. Um, and then work up to like lunchtime. Let me have some lunch, yeah. and then nice. just good know. pure hard work, man. Just good yeah. pure hard work. Like, you know, it's just, um, he even eats after he trains this way. Like this is just good pure hard work and work ethic, man. Um, all right, let's talk nutrition. What does uh, food look like in the day? Uh, food for me is again, I'm not as consistent as what I used to be. Um, however. I do believe that uh, your body kind of adapts really, yeah. uh, and you've got to know your uh, sort of your own body. But I tend to try and keep the food kind of balanced in a sense. Um, I don't have that set routine like I used to when I used to bodybuild. It, I mean, it used to be on the clock: six a.m., nine, twelve, three, 
six, oh, yeah, just nine p.m. Proper. You know, you know, it was it was all that. Now I don't. I just eat when I'm when I'm hungry. Yeah. Keep it kind of basics, really. You know, yes. three four meals a day, probably three meals a day if that. Maybe what a snack. Um, nice. But it's not a set routine. Try and obviously like keep away from any processed, refined junk food. Um, just try and eat what we would call more fresh food, of course. Yeah. Uh, I tend to have a bit more of a higher protein fat diet. I feel yeah. that works for me. Try and keep my carbohydrates down. Nice. Uh, or have my carbohydrates at certain times post workout. Um, and that's it, really. Nice. And you have an amazing food bar here with like really good stuff, real food. Yeah. Uh, nothing fake and no like you know garbage that you get at other places. And uh, yeah, cool. Nice man. Um, let's talk supplements. What are your favorite supplements? What do you currently take? Uh, again, at the moment, everything's a bit up the air, you know, <laughs> up in the air. Um, but I do take a vitamin D, yeah. uh, okay, D3 uh, supplement because we don't always get. How much do you generally go for? What's the uh, I have a maintenance dose, 2000 IUs. 2000. Okay. Uh, I do get out, try and get outside as well. Nice. Um, Take, I do take a green powder when I can remember because um, I do str struggle um, with vegetables and stuff like that. So I do take that. Uh, I have a zinc and magnesium which nice. I take in the evening, um, which I feel helps. Um, and yeah, now some Amigas just uh, <laughs> thanks to you, Ray. You know, they, they, the gift. How do you like them? Yeah, great. Yeah, 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 yeah nice, good. Nice, yeah, nice. Uh, it's just it, it is hard because I'm on I'm on the run. Yeah, I'm on the run a lot. Yeah. I don't have an office here. Yeah. Um, a month, so it is hard. So I do know that's what that idea about these drinks came, and that's why I want to do some um, branches of not just protein but other stuff. Yeah. Because people are on the go, yeah. so it means having Don't a stash at home, a stash in work, a stash in the car. I mean, it is it's, it's difficult. So that's one thing I've experienced the last couple of years is, is keeping my nutrition nice. uh, supplementation. Nice. Uh, I'm not a big supplement guy, to be honest. I used to be. Um, but now, as one thing I've learned, I think if you've got the basics in your food, yeah. you're giving yourself enough calories, you're giving yourself enough uh, protein, carbohydrates. Again, you have to sort of understand your own body uh, to fuel you through the day, the workout. I think supplementation for me is kind of not like I used to have a protein shake every day, twice a day. Now, you know, I don't have any protein at home. I might have a protein shake after training uh, if I don't feel like eating. Um, but I think if you've got a good balanced nutritional program, I think supplementation is cool. kind of... Uh, yeah, redundant almost. Yeah, I mean, I think it's needed sometimes, but, you know, not as much as what, okay. you know, we get, we get yeah. sold. Cool. Um, any preferred uh, green powder? Any brand um, that you suggest? Not really. I remember Charles no, Falcon saying that. I used that. to use, is it Nature's Plus? Um, okay. One. Or just a, a good spirulina wheatgrass. I always find wheatgrass for me is really good. Really good, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I find it really gives me a really good energy kick. Good. Um, clarity of thought. I really do like it, yeah. Nice, okay. I'm gonna look at that for sure. Um, talking training, what does your current training routine look like? I know it's you're on, you're on the run and it's up in the air a little bit, but what do you, what do you, uh, is it a body split or is it a full body? Um, how do you? Uh, the body split, I tend to do again, um, maybe upper lower split on that kind of basic. Yeah. Uh, push pull. Yeah. Um, super set. Yeah. You know, agonist and agonist purrs. Basics is in, um, you know, pull ups, dips, yeah. Yeah. pulling movements, heavy deadlifts, yeah. heavy pressing. Uh, so yeah, keep it very kind of basics, cool. and um, yeah, and that's how I tend to do an upper body, lower body, cool. and a conditioning day as well. Nice. I like to keep that separate. Nice. What's your favorite conditioning movement? Um, I'll be honest, probably running, yeah. uh, or a circuit between running, bike, ski, erg, yeah. doing some sort of intervals or nice. some sort of tempos, or even just going down to the beach or something nice. on, the, on the sand. You know, one thing really cool I noticed about you, some, something that I learned from one of my uh, mentors and the guys that I, I really follow, uh, Matt Wenning, is uh, you smash your weaknesses before and then you go into a big a, a big lift. I think you do it really well. So I've noticed that before you deadlift, you smash your back. Yeah, I alternate it. So if, because I think deadlift you can do for upper body, it's a full body movement. Yeah, correct. So say if I decide I alternate it from week week in week out so maybe I might do deadlift as a lower body focus yep. so I'll start with deadlift yep. uh, and then work up 
and then if it's if if I put deadlift into an upper body workout, I like to do it at the end. So I like to get my back really warm, uh, do all my posterior chain, yes. hamstrings back, and then finish off with a deadlift as well. Amazing. Top bench. What's your max max bench? Um, I mean, look back in when I was more bodybuilding. Um, I think around 400 plus. Yeah, yeah. For reps, eh? Yeah, and it then, you know, whereas now I tend to go for more, um, whereas back in when I was bodybuilding, I wasn't really kind of um, going for singles going or doubles, singles, but I was going for a little bit more reps, it was bodybuilding focus. I was much bigger then, of course. Yeah. I mean, I was an extra 10 kgs heavier. I'm going to try to get a picture of you. Um, yeah, I've got pictures, also, you know, 10 kgs heavier. I was, it was, yeah, so. Nice. Awesome. Top uh, top deadlift? Uh, probably about 240, 245. Beautiful. Not amazing. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Um, if someone came up to you and said, I want to lose fat, I'm sure you get that question like three times a day. Uh, what would be your first, what would be the first thing that came to your mind and you're like, okay, if you got to change one thing, this is what it is. I think, look, I think it's uh, first thing that comes to mind is you need to sort of analyse and have a look at how they, what their eating pattern is. Yeah. I mean, look, it is calories in versus calories out, so obviously first look at that fundamental rule. Um, so if they were looking at weight, you know, look at how many calories they're taking in yeah. um, per day. And then second, I'd also have a look at timing. Yeah. Um, you know, where are they get, where, when are they when are they eating? Say, um, say, say this was just a random street conversation where you didn't have the yeah. time for this. I'd say, okay, first thing, yeah. first thing I would say, just chuck out all the refined and processed food. Beautiful. Just chuck that out. Straight up. Chuck out the juices, yes. the fizzy drinks, uh, any sort of ready meals, any sort of, you know, just, you know, any Processed bread, sugar, stuff refined, like that. yeah. yeah stuff, chuck out that and, ju and just, stay, just stay down the fresh, Beautiful. fresh aisle. Okay, Keep real fresh, food. and that's it. Real yeah. food. Beautiful. Awesome. Um, let's move into our, but we're coming close to the end, Alex, don't worry. Uh, we call this when in Dubai, do the Dubai. Uh, favorite restaurant in Dubai? Oh, there's a lot. And for me... First thing uh, that pops into your head. I like uh, Biche at the Hilton. Biche so, yeah, at the Hilton. It's an Italian, yeah. Oh, beautiful. What do you, what's, your, what's your recommended dish there? It's all good. It's all good. good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Biche. Um, we'll make sure to have a link uh, below. Favorite restaurant in the marina? Marina. I mean, I'd probably say Biche as well. Biche as well. This is like Marina JBR. Yeah. Right? Okay. Fine. Cool. Or okay. I could maybe say. I tell you, it's very good one. actually. Um, in the Grosvenor House, um, there's a Turkish restaurant in there actually. Uh, very good. Turkish restaurant, yeah, Grover House. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Um, oh, I've it. I'm sure we'll find it. I'm sure we'll find it. Um, favorite order in? Uh, probably Mexican. Mexican. And the Mexican is from. Oh, again, forgot the name of it, but it's the old school. It's been here years in Jamira. Okay. It's, um, Maria Benita, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maria Benita, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah definitely, yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, favorite place to shop for groceries? Uh, just just Finney's. But now on the marina where I live, uh, Marks is open. Marks and Spencers. Marks and Spencers. So yeah, yeah Marks and Spencers and Spinney's. Spinney's. Yes. Okay. Uh, top fitness health strength experts in Dubai that or UAE we should be following. Um, Apart from myself. Okay. <laughs> and yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't put anything out there, so. Um, do I, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know because uh, there's a lot of guys and girls that come in here. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I know they have Instagram accounts, but I don't know if anyone's really sort of putting good quality information out there. Cool. You know. Yeah. Apart from myself. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, places to buy supplements. Where would you buy supplements? Um. Again. If I uh, probably t to be honest, like Life Pharmacy, if it's going to get a tub of protein from there, um, in the uh, you've got Sporter, yes. you've got all those guys. Uh, to be honest with you, I really don't 
buy too much now. But yeah, probably because they sell the supplement out range would be Solgar. Yeah, okay. Um, normally get Solgar and they have in life pharmacy. So, cool, yeah. yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, favorite coffee shop in Dubai? Or UAE, whatever you uh, I don't really have a, say, um, some of us. Some of us, okay. I've heard of that place. Alrighty guys, we move on to our rapid fire quick like question. Kevin only gets five seconds, uh, two seconds okay. to answer this. Uh, whatever comes to your head, Kevin, the first thing that comes, I'll give you options and uh, we're yeah. just we're just gonna have some fun here. Okay, Arnold or Dorian? Arnold, yeah. Kate Winslet in Titanic or Angelina Jolie in Tomb Raider? Uh, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Yeah. Thor or Superman? Superman. Favorite uh, music artist? Favorite? I don't really have a favorite artist, to be honest. Favorite genre? Uh, I like all types. You know, all types I like yeah. all types. Yeah, yeah. That's way more than five seconds. Uh, yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, Lamborghini, uh, Ferrari. Uh, Lambo. Lambo. Favorite movie? And um, many. Uh, Snatch. Snatch. Oh, nice. Uh, favorite book? There's a lot of books. I don't have one favorite book really. Okay. Uh, all right, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Ice cream or salad? Uh, ice cream, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, weirdest member complaint? Um, you know what? I'm pretty lucky, really. I don't think there's really... I'm sure there has. <laughs> so politically I'm sure, correct. I'm sure there has. I'm sure there has. <laughs> but um, I can't remember. But So I think every, everyone's been pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, everyone's pretty cool. Hey. Okay, on that bombshell, let's move forward and to our final piece. Um, last few questions, Kev. What would your friend say you're secretly really good at that we don't know about? Uh, nothing. I mean, uh, uh, you see you see what you get, really. So I don't, I'm not hiding anything. It's, it's any, any skills. You're or not like a quality. secretly good cook or something? <sighs> no. Uh, like a like a music instrument. No. Um, if you had to gift a book to someone on Christmas, it could be a trainer, it could be me, it could be a coworker, it could be uh, anyone. What would be that book you would like everyone to read? I tell you what's a very good book, and I got it because I, I do get a lot of books, and it's quite funny. I just I just purchased it off Amazon last week, and it's called The Art of Manliness. Ooh, I've heard of that. And uh, it's it's a really good book, and it's it's, it's kind of like quick snippets of all different areas in your life, nice. how you can be Manly. a man. Okay, yeah, a man. beautiful. It's really good. I'm picking actually. that up, I'm it's picking fun, that up. But there's some like how to survive a crash, how to tie a, um, a tie properly yeah, a tie, or not, yeah. you know, how to deadlift, how to um, escape, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> nice. it's really good. It's really okay, good cool. Book. I'll pick that up. Uh, what advice would you give your 20 year old self? Think of the future because yeah. it does come quick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, last but not least, where can people find you? Uh, in the gym. Right? In the gym. Yeah. Uh, or the gyms. Yeah. The yeah. gyms. Instagram. One of the. So just get, give the gym the, a call and. Yeah, one of the gyms. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you so much for being Thanks. here. It was a total honor. I mean, I, I, I know that I got tons of value from there, and I know that our listeners probably got a lot of value for there too. Um, thank you for thank you for joining us, You're man. You're welcome, and thanks for asking me. And thanks for. Uh being privileged to be the first first one. I know many like, more to come. Yeah, as a, you know, in, in the beginning, I was like, "Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going on camera, and I'm so camera shy. I got, I, I'm so uncomfortable." I'm like, "Hey, why don't we just do it with someone who's like who I know, and you know, who's I know he's going to be chilled out, and he's he's probably the nicest human being on planet Earth." And if I choke, he's gonna save me. Um, so I was like, you know, Kevin's Kevin's the guy. Um, so yeah, Kevin, thanks for thanks for thanks for joining us. All right, man. thanks, Ray. Awesome. Good luck. Thanks, guys. How's it going, guys and girls? Thank you for watching. Our Thanks for watching! <laughs> Thanks for watching my view with Kevin Tashira. Hope you got loads out of there. Um, if you like what we do, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, share it with your friends. Tell them what we do. And uh, stay tuned for more updates with some great projects that are coming up on the side. Thanks for watching again, guys. Thanks for watching!
stay strong and stay hungry, my friends.